2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7 And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. We have all heard about the period of time leading up to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christian eschatology, this period is commonly referred to as the last days. Now let's focus on 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7 that says, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. The Apostle speaks of a day all of humanity cannot avoid, which is why, of course, he uses the word when. At an appointed time in human history, the when he speaks of will happen. Each hour brings us closer to this when the Apostle speaks of. Each day brings us closer to this when the Apostle speaks of. Time is moving, history is moving, the days are slowly being ticked off the calendar, moving us ever so closely to the day when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. When Saint Paul the Apostle speaks about the second coming, he never speaks about the second coming in terms of if, or maybe, or possibly. He says when. There is a certainty in his language when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed. What does it mean to reveal? Review is a common word, but not something we use often like what we say every time. There are other words that cover up for the word reveal. The Bible used reveal purposely because of how Christ will come into our realm. I remember when a new statue was being revealed at my college compass, the statue had been there for about two months, but was covered. It was hidden and we couldn't see it until the day came when it was revealed. The covering was removed and we saw the statue that was there all along for the past two months. And that is what Saint Paul the Apostle is referring to. Jesus Christ will be revealed from the realm that he is in now into our realm. The Bible has even given us the signs of the period of time leading up to the return of the Lord. We have been told the things that will happen during the time of the Great Tribulation. All of these things will start to manifest just as they have been told. Jesus said these things must happen before the second revealing will happen. It will not be possible for the second revealing to happen if these signs don't manifest. What are these signs? Let's just focus on two. Scoffers will come. 2 Peter 3 verse 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their lusts. Who are these scoffers? They are those who mock the things of God and those who accept Christ. They will go to the extent of persecuting the elects and mock them. An example of scoffers is those who killed Jesus and mocked him, saying he should save himself. We are seeing people like these in our time now. This is what the unbelievers do most. They mock the things of God. They make coarse jokes about the things of God, but they will be in great numbers. They are scoffers mocking the return of Christ. The second sign we will see manifest is that the gospel will reach the world. It is believed that there are places in the world today that are yet to be discovered or places that cannot be reached. Some of these places have been reached, but the gospel has not been taken to them. Believers will take the gospel to every part of the world or as far as they can. 
Then we see that God will even send the angels to preach the gospel. God keeps his word always, always. Everyone will hear the gospel before the return of Jesus. These days we believe that there have been people who have taken it upon themselves to take the gospel to the world, but still the gospel has not been taken to the corners of the world. These days the Bible says even God will send angels to preach the gospel to the world. Revelation 14 verse 6 Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Back to our verse, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Jesus will be revealed. The kind of revealing that this will be is like removing something, covering a thing. The clouds will be opened. The Bible explained how this second coming will be. It is not that Jesus will just come down. Some things will happen and he will be revealed. In an award show, before calling someone who will get the grand award, the stage is changed, the light is changed, the atmosphere is changed, and everyone knows something big is about to be revealed. Lastly, they reveal the name of the winner. I believe the second coming will be like this when he is revealed. Just imagine. Just imagine when he is revealed. The coming of Jesus involves power. He is coming with might. When he was on earth, given to by Mary, he preached the gospel. He loved everyone and preached the love. This time he is not coming to preach. He is coming in full power. The Bible made it clear that the angels will be with him in flaming fire. He will also come in his glory. From the book of Jude, Jude quoted Enoch that the saints who have been raptured will also follow Christ when he is coming back for the judgment of the world. Jude 1 verse 14 says, Now Enoch, the seventh of Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Isaiah is classified as one of the major prophets in the Bible, and for obvious reasons. God revealed mysteries to Isaiah. But the prophecy I want to focus on today is one that is rarely mentioned. Isaiah 63 verse 1, which says, Who is this who comes from Edom, with dyed garments from Bozra? This one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength? I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save, the prophet Isaiah begins this chapter with a question. Who is this? Can there be any doubt that this is none other than the great Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is coming to save his people of Israel? The last time the people of Israel saw him, he presented himself to them in Jerusalem as their Messiah in fulfillment of Zechariah 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just, and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Yet, he was rejected by the nation, and Jesus told them in Luke 13, verse 35, See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Isaiah is speaking of a day when he comes to save his people as their triumphant Messiah. They will see him traveling in the greatness of his strength. The prophet Isaiah was not in confusion about the personality of the Lord Jesus Christ when he opened his prophecy with the word, Who is this that cometh from Edom? Isaiah used this statement to describe the glory and the power with which Christ will return at his second appearance. For he later described that he is glorious in his clothing and that he travels in the greatness of his strength. The words of Isaiah are in direct connection with the song of Miriam in Exodus 15 verse 11 when she sang a song of victory over the Egyptian foes, when she said, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? As the prophet wondered at the awesomeness of the Lord and reasoned within his mind, he got a gentle response from the Lord himself. I that speaks in righteousness, mighty to save. So, we see that the return of the Lord is to establish righteousness and to save his people. This prophetic event that was seen by Isaiah occurs prior to the battle of Armageddon. Jeremiah 49 verse 22 confirmed the prophecy of Isaiah by furthering describing what sort of event it will be when Christ shall return. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle, and spread his wings over Bozrah, and at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs.